Okay, hi there, Jeff here again with another essay walkthrough. This time we're going to take a look at one of the excellent advanced information shorts that you two have published on Brazil. And uh, there's a terrific daily response uh, extract and then some questions on Brazil. Here's extract one uh, about growth in Brazil. And uh, if you're going to have a look at this question before we work through the video, then maybe press the pause button on this one and have a read through. So this is uh, extract one. Uh, the, the Brazilian economy used to be a very fast-growing nation, uh, but in fact, growth has slowed down dramatically in recent times. Uh, just reading through, here are some of the things I highlighted. The growth in, the, in Brazil has, uh, has been um, uh, linked to low productivity, poor infrastructure, corruption, political instability, a very, very high Gini coefficient, the most unequal country in Latin America. Uh, the wealth from the commodity boom has not necessarily been delivering the increases in quality education and healthcare that are important, particularly from an HDI perspective. Um, and uh, uh, there are some bright spots for Brazil, though. Uh, they're in a tech boom. They have the world's biggest standalone digital bank, New Bank, and uh, they've fostered the development of globally competitive high tech agriculture. So, those two industries, financial services and farming, would be something I'll be looking to introduce into the answer, if I could. To exploit these opportunities to the full, Brazil needs to adopt practical solutions and should begin with the principle that wealth must first be created before it can be shared. Interesting line there. Um, so this was an argument for uh, trying to develop the private sector, improving the rule of law, reducing corruption, attracting foreign investment, etc. The article suggesting that taxation might actually be too low. The top Rate of income tax, only 27.5%. Then there was a figure uh, showing growth in Brazil, and this showed the annual growth in Brazil from 2010 through to 2020. The years have been taken off the bottom, but it's pretty easy to work out that 7.5% was growth in 2010, and minus 4%, of course, 2020, the year of the pandemic. But the dotted line suggesting a fall in the trend growth. Quite important if you get data in tables and charts, you must use the data. It must be brought into the answers, please. I've put here answers must include some data from figure one, as it is the main source of data on Brazilian growth over the last decade. So it's very important to, to put data in the answers. Often when examiners read essays, they are light on application. Uh, growth, for example, just, just very quick data manipulation, there's been no growth uh, above 2%. Growth has been below 2% in each year since 2014. In fact, there have been three years of recessions, haven't there, I think? Uh, and therefore, as a result, uh, that has the consequences for per capita incomes. And then figure two looked at the tax structure. This is the percentage of total tax revenues. Uh, that come from various taxes, and uh, the, the, the areas add up to 100% for each for Brazil, in, in the black area there, and the OECD, the average for high-income nations. And you can see that uh, Brazil is a, a, is a very uh, um, a protectionist country, high tariffs, so they get a lot of revenue from that, and also that they have very low income tax revenues. Only 9% of their tax revenue comes from income tax compared to 24% in, in the average of high-income countries. I think partly because, of course, they've got a huge informal economy, uh, linked in particular to those vast informal settlements in, in, in and around cities, and also very high income inequality, alongside per, per capita incomes being low, so you don't get the income tax generated. But again, data there that can and should be used in the answer. Here was the question that was set with reference to the information provided and your own knowledge. Evaluate the micro and macro economic advantages of policies that could be used to stimulate growth and development. Some students, when they wrote the answer here, we, we went through this in class, talked about micro and macro policies. Well, that's OK, but it does say micro and macro advantages. So you can talk about macro policies if you want for both your main paragraphs. It's basically thinking about the micro and macro micro and macro aspects of policy rather than policy themselves. I uh, just want to talk you through, if you'll love to stay with me, uh, my, my work to answer here, and some of the themes, some of the ideas uh, that lie behind it. What I've done here, figure one tracks the slowdown in average real GDP growth and trend growth dropping below 0% after a 4% decline in 2020. See, what I've done there in the first line of the answer 
I've got my application mark, yes, because I've used some data. And one of the aims should be in the exam is to get some data, some application into every single paragraph. So I've started with application. One fiscal supply side policy that Brazil might introduce would be an increase in tax funded government spending on education. So that's my policy, education spending. Now, a lot of students just say the government should spend more on education. That's, in my opinion, that's too vague. It's too general. To get a better answer, you've got to make it specific. Oh, by the way, education has a one-third weighting in the Human Development Index, which is quite important. So I then give two specific examples of education spending. Conditional cash transfers might be offered for parents whose children attend nurseries. So this is where you link uh, one aspect of the welfare state to, uh, you know, to parents getting their kids to school. And scholarships, apprenticeships could be offered to help build the human capital available to Britain, uh, Brazil's fast-growing financial service sector, including the digital lender New Bank. Uh, by the way, I'm using here uh, hedging words, could be offered, might be offered, as opposed to will be, okay? But I'm linking their uh, apprenticeships to human capital to financial services, helping Brazil move away from that primary product dependence. At a macroeconomic level, successful education has the advantage, going back to the question, of improving skills and capabilities across the economy and consequently causes an outward shift in both aggregate demand, that's the increase in government spending, of course, and long run aggregate supply. And this will help to increase trend growth, lift employment and real wages in the formal economy and perhaps contribute to lowering Brazil's GDP coefficient, which is one of the highest in the world. So what I'm saying here is that targeted investment spending, funded by government spending and taxes, uh, could have the effect on both the demand and supply side of the Brazilian economy. And not just there in green uh, that I'm, I'm packing in a lot of, a lot of application. You can, this paragraph might be a couple of lines too long, but it, it does the job pretty well. Then the evaluation, always leave two lines between paragraphs. Leave lines, please. It makes the examiner very clear that you're breaking up the analysis and the evaluation. Figure two shows that personal income taxes in Brazil account for only 9% of tax revenues, much lower than, I think it was 24%, wasn't it, the average for high-income countries. Again, right in the start, right at the start of this paragraph, I'm getting my application in. The top rate of income tax is only 25%, 27.5%, contrasted, of course, with 45% in the UK. <clears throat> Pardon me. So one possible macro disadvantage, I'm showing that I'm evaluating, is that higher marginal tax rates on top, in top income earners uh, designed to make the tax system more progressive might lead to a partial brain drain. So many workers in high-tech financial services, including banks such as New Bank, keep coming back to that, are likely to be geographically mobile and an exodus of high productivity labour could damage the supply side potential of the Brazilian economy since it would lead to a fall in the active labour supply and a drop in per capita incomes. And then I throw in the idea that the lack of analysis hints that a higher tax burden can sometimes <coughs> reduce taxes. So the disadvantage, if you're funding higher education spending from taxation, is that you might damage the supply side of the economy. Again, principle here, <coughs> pardon me, I'm trying to get my application in early with each paragraph. By the way, I would include diagrams in this. Uh, I'd use ADS, perhaps. I haven't used it in my answer just for uh, issues of time. Second point, a second policy approach might be an increase in government borrowing to fund critical infrastructure projects. Oh, by the way, when the students did this, I said they had lots of different policies, minimum wages, buffer stock schemes, lots of interesting things. Uh, I just went for infrastructure. So extract one points to poor infrastructure. Uh, there we go. I've got my application in. And my own knowledge, Brazil ranks 108th amongst 137 countries in terms of quality of infrastructure. At a microeconomic level, so my first point was really macro. At a micro level, weak infrastructure in areas such as logistics, telecoms, energy, basic health and education and sanitation, increases supply costs for businesses and therefore damages export competitiveness. Brazilian government might target long-term borrowing as a way of funding projects or given the savings gap aim to attract inflows of FDI. The involvement of FDI might help to increase the share of tax that comes from corporations from the current level of 9%. Back to figure two. A microeconomic advantage 
of improved infrastructure is that supply costs fall, leading to lower prices for consumers and higher super long profits for Brazilian firms. This is shown in my analysis diagram. Well, I won't show you the diagram, but basically I showed a, a fall in marginal and average cost uh, leading to higher, higher profits but lower prices. In evaluation, structural words there to point to the examiner towards the fact you're evaluating. Extract one points to high rates of corruption in Brazil. Again, I'm getting my application in early. It's really interesting when you read the exam reports that a lot of students are not getting application marks. They're writing purely theoretical answers. And, uh, you know, it's so annoying when people... <laughs> the answers are fine, but they're not using the data. Extract one points to high rates of corruption, which increases the risks from infrastructure projects since multi-billion dollar contracts might be embezzled by fraudulent officials. When corruption is endemic, projects are delayed... And cost overruns lead to even higher levels of government borrowing and debt. It's a clear cause of government failure. Given that Brazil must pay high yields of about 7-10% to 10 on new bonds, that's my own knowledge, this could lead to pressure on higher taxes in the future, including indirect taxes, which as figure 2 shows, account for 43% of total revenues, and which overall tend to be regressive. Corruption in Brazil involves high levels of tax avoidance and tax evasion. So even if capital spending projects successfully drive growth, and reverse the trend shown in figure one, then the government is unlikely to see the fiscal dividend needed to fund improved basic health and education, both pivotal to better development outcomes. So fundamentally, infrastructure projects can lift the economy and drive higher growth and per capita incomes. But then, then the wider, bigger question is whether the endemic corruption in Brazil will hold back the tax revenues needed to fund public services. And, of course, in the 25 marker for Edexcel, you'll need a final reason judgment. Again, I'm trying to get some application into every paragraph here. Figure 1 shows that growth in Brazil has slowed appreciably from a high of 7.5% in 2010. And uh, there have been three years of recession in the six years up to including 2020. Growth has lagged below 2% per year in each year, causing per capita incomes to stagnate. So I've just got, again, a bit more application. Uh, macroeconomics has micro foundations, so I would argue... That to sustain inclusive growth and development, Brazil needs to return to the successful strategies of the past, including an increase in so spending on social assistance programs, such as uh, the famous Bolsa Familia cash transfer system. Key to this will be tackling corporate tax avoidance and growing the size of the formal labour market so that tax revenues can rise. Final region judgment, you could have, you know, it's lots of different ways of doing this. I could have said, well, in the long run, Brazil perhaps needs to liberalise its trade. Uh, to bring down living costs for consumers or or that fundamentally the Brazilian economy, its growth rate, um, I don't know, whatever it is. It needs to change the pattern of output away from uh, primary sector dependence towards whatever, manufacturing and, uh, and, and banking. It's up to you. You've just, you just got to take a view, say what you think is most significant. It's up to you how you want to do this. So there we go. There was my 25 mark question on Brazil. I didn't include any diagrams in my answer on the video, but I would have included it in the exam. Hopefully that was useful. Stay happy, stay positive, and uh, stay focused as the exam approaches, and hopefully see you again sometime soon. Bye.